You should have acted. They're already here. The Elder Scrolls told of their return. Their defeat was merely a delay. Till the time after Oblivion opened. When the sons of Skyrim would spill their own blood. But no one wanted to believe them. Believe they even existed. And when the truth finally dawns, it dawns in fire. But there's one they fear. In their tongue, he is Dovahkiin, Dragonborn. Hello everyone and welcome back to the story of Skyrim. In my last video I covered the introductory sequence to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim including everything from the very first loading screen we encounter to the moment we entered Helgen Keep. In this video we will be continuing from where I left off by finishing the quest Unbound, which is the first quest that we, the player, receive in Skyrim. Now before I begin here I'd like to give you all just a little bit more context. At the end of the last episode, we entered Helgen Keep with either Rayloth, a member of the Stormcloak Rebellion, or Hadvar, a soldier of the Imperial Legion. Regardless of who we choose here, we end up in Helgen Keep, but the person we choose to enter with determines not only the loot that we will receive, but also our allies, enemies, and the dialogue we will encounter here. Ultimately, the actions we take do not affect us too heavily down the road. But for the sake of being thorough, I have made a second character to experience both parts of this introductory dungeon. Say hello to Atticus, my Imperial character who will have the pleasure of showing you Hadvar's side of the escape. Looks like we're the only ones who made it. Was that really a dragon? The bring us of the end times? We should keep moving. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. There you go. Take a look around. There should be plenty of gear to choose from. I'm going to see if I can find something for these bones. As you can see, despite being one of the individuals who captured us, Hadvar here isn't above helping us by cutting our binds. Perhaps not all these Imperials are as bad as we thought. When Hadvar here is finished, we can go ahead and loot the room. Loot-wise, on the Imperial side of things, we can get some Imperial light armor, some Imperial boots, an iron sword or two, the Helgen Keep key, this could be useful later on, an Imperial helmet in one of these chests by the beds, and some random gold scattered throughout the room. While we let Atticus get into his gear here, let's check back with my character Jor, who is currently escaping with Rayloff. We'll meet again in Sovngarde, brother. Looks like we're the only ones who made it. That thing was a dragon, no doubt. Just like the children's stories and the legends. The harbingers of the end times. We better get moving. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. There you go. You may as well take Gunnar's gear. He won't be needing it anymore. As you all can see here, the Stormcloak side of things is pretty similar to how the Imperial side goes, the only difference so far being the dialogue and the gear. Speaking of gear, looting the Stormcloak's body here as we've been directed, gets us an Iron War Axe, a Stormcloak Kurios, and some fur boots. Let's equip all this real quick. Alright, get that armor on, and give that axe a few swings. I'm going to see if I can find some way out of here. Damn, no way to open this from our side. Come on, it's 
The Imperials! Take cover! Ah, look who it is. It's that, uh, pleasant Imperial officer from earlier. That looks like I'll finally get to thank her for all her kind words. After killing these Imperial officers, we can either loot the Helgen Keep key off of the officer, or if we aren't fast enough, Rayloff will actually beat us to it and use it on the gate himself, letting us continue deeper into Helgen Keep. Maybe one of these Imperials had the key. Let's see here. Here we are. Found the key. Let's see if it a door. That's Come on, let's get out of here before the dragon brings the whole tower down on our heads. Real quick, just want to apologize for that audio bug. I have no idea why that happened. But uh, let's go ahead and jump back to our Imperial character who is currently escaping with Hadvar. We can start making our way out of the room we were in. As we approach the wooden gate, we hear storm cloaks. We need to get moving. That dragon is tearing up the whole key. Just give me a minute. I'm out of breath. Hear that? Storm cloaks. Maybe we can reason with them. Now surprisingly enough, Hadfire is actually pretty rational and level-headed. He wants to partner up with these guys, but they are just not having it, so they attack us anyway. Hold on now. Is someone we there? If you want to die. <laughs> After killing these Stormcloaks here, we use the key we collected earlier to make our way further into the keep. As we make our way down the steps and around a corner, the dragon outside shakes the keep, causing the tunnel ahead of us to collapse before we can enter it. Look out! Damn, that dragon doesn't give up easy. Dragon doesn't give up easy. Both Hadvar and Rayloff decide to take a detour through the nearby storage room, where either a pair of Imperial soldiers or Stormcloak rebels are waiting for us. Grab everything important and let's move. Dragon's burning everything to the ground. I just need to gather some more potions. Death to the Empire! The prisoners are escaping! What are you doing? We need to get out of Helgen! Now! These Imperials have potions in here. We're going to need them. What was that? Imperial to the Empire! After dispatching the pair of enemies, you are prompted to search the room for potions. If you follow your marker, you can loot some health, stamina, and magicka potions from a specified barrel. But I also recommend searching the rest of the room for valuables, as there is food, ingredients, gold, and even some potions on a nearby shelf. After looting the room, you can head to either Rayloff or Hadvar and follow them out the door behind them to the dungeon below. Done then, this way. Done. Let's get moving. In the dungeon, you can find some Stormcloak soldiers fighting a torturer and his assistant. Who you help is decided by who you decide to escape with. You will side with the torturer and his assistant if you are with Hadvar, and you fight alongside the Stormcloaks if you are with Rayloff. Either way, you will get some unique dialogue if you manage to keep both of your allies alive. I cannot- Ugh! Take care of that. Was Jarl Ulfric with you? No, I haven't seen him since the dragon showed up. You fellows happened along just in time. These boys seemed a bit upset at how I've been entertaining their comrades. Don't you even know what's going on? A dragon is attacking Helgen. A dragon? Please, don't make up nonsense. Although, come to think of it, I did hear some odd noises coming from over there. Come with us. We need to get out of here. You have no authority over me, boy. Didn't you hear me? I said the keep is under attack! Forget the old man. I'll come with you. 
After the fight, you are pulled aside and prompted to pick the lock of a cell holding what appears to be the body of a dead mage alongside a tome and some gold. Wait a second. Looks like there's something in this cage. Don't bother with that. Lost the key ages ago. Poor fellow screamed for weeks. See if you can get it open with some picks. We'll need everything we can get. Sure. Take all my things. Please. Canna, let's go. Wait a second. Looks like there's something in this cage. Ah, it's locked. See if you can get it open with some picks. We might need that gold once we get out. After unlocking the cage, you can loot the rest of the room where there are some notable items, like some random loot, some lockpicks, weapons, and even some books, one of which is interestingly named the Book of the Dragonborn. The book goes into detail about Dragonborns throughout the history of the TES universe, but the ending is quite interesting. When Misrule takes its place at the eight corners of the world, when the Brass Tower walks and time is reshaped, when the Trice Blessed fail and the Red Tower trembles, when the Dragonborn ruler loses his throne and the White Tower falls, when the Snow Tower lies sundered, kingless, bleeding, the World Eater wakes and the wheel turns upon the last Dragonborn. I know this snippet of information here might seem random, but this book is actually placed here on purpose for reasons that Skyrim veterans like myself are all too aware of. Interestingly enough, the lines here at the end of the book are actually referencing previous entries in the TES series. The first line referring to Eight Corners of the World refers to TES-1 Arena, and when Yegar Tharn ruled over all of Tamriel by betraying and then disguising himself as Uriel Septim. The second line with the Brass Tower and time being reshaped is referring to TES-2 Daggerfall, and how by the end of the game, the giant brass golem Numidium walked, causing a dragon break that fractured time itself. The third line mentioning the Trice Blessed Who Fail is talking about the Tribunal and more specifically the Nerevarine Prophecy that was the main focus of TES-3 Morrowind. The fourth line talking about the Dragonborn Ruler who loses his throne and the White Tower falling is referring to TES-4 Oblivion, where Emperor Uriel Septim VII was assassinated and the Imperial City where the White Gold Tower resides was attacked by the Daedric Prince Mayrun Stagon. The second to last line talking about the Snow Tower lying kingless is most likely referring to how Skyrim's High King was murdered by Ulfric Stormcloak, leaving Skyrim, the Snow Tower, in a very turbulent state being kingless and bleeding from its current civil war. Ulfric Stormcloak, some here in Helgen call you a hero, but a hero doesn't use a power like the voice to murder his king and usurp his throne. You started this war, plunged Skyrim into chaos, and now the Empire is going to put you down and restore the peace. And that leaves the last line, referring to a World Eater and this last Dragonborn. We've already deduced that the dragon outside is most likely this Alduin, based off the loading screen showing him at the beginning alongside a quote describing Alduin's prophecy. So now that Alduin, the World Eater, has appeared, where is this last Dragonborn the book and prophecy are making reference to? Moving on out of this room and rejoining with our allies further into the keep, we see a hole in the wall leading to a cave system. Following the others, we discover that there are more enemies ahead. Imperials if we are escaping with Rayloff. Orders are to wait until General Tullius arrives. I'm not waiting to be killed by a dragon! We need to fall back! Just give the General some time. Freedom or Solemn Guard! Or Stormcloaks if we are with Hadvar. Where in Oblivion are we supposed to go? Where's the way out? Just give me a minute. Let me think. Either way, you must engage and defeat them to continue, and once you do, if your allies are still alive, you get some more unique dialogue. I better stay back and see the old man. Good luck, you two. Ah, take care of that. Let's go on ahead. See if the way is clear. I'll keep watching in case Ulfric comes through here. Talos guide the both of you. If your allies are still alive, everyone besides Rayloff and Hadvar decides to stay behind, and you must continue on without them. Moving deeper into the cave, we lower and cross a small bridge to access the deeper parts of these caverns. As we cross the bridge, we hear a roar once more before a rock falls from above, destroying the bridge and cutting us off from where we came from. 
Now we can continue to follow our companion, but for those who don't know, we can actually jump down into the area below where the bridge was and follow a small passageway. Down here we find a skeleton both sitting next to and holding on to loot we can take. I recommend exploring every crevice of this cave, as there are little trinkets like this sprinkled throughout the rest of these caverns. Either way, we can keep moving forward out of the small passageway and immediately link back up with Hadvar or Raylof. Ah, that doesn't go anywhere. I guess we'd better try this way. That doesn't go anywhere. I guess we'd better try this way. Through the next area, we fight some Frostbite Spiders, which are new enemies to the series with Skyrim's release. I hate those damn things. Too many eyes, you know? Giant snakes. So after beating these creepy critters, we can loot the room and continue on to what is the final part of Helgen Keep, which holds yet another new foe for us to face. Bear just ahead. See her? Hold up. There's a bear just ahead. See her? Yes, after fighting through groups of soldiers and spiders, our last foe is a bear, and we have two ways of handling her. We can either sneak past her, I'd rather not tangle with her right now. Let's try to sneak by. Just take it nice and slow, and watch where you step. That was close. I'd rather not tangle with her right now. You might be able to sneak by. Just take it nice and slow and watch where you step. Go ahead. I'll follow your lead and watch your back. Easy does it. That was close. Or we can kill her. Which, funnily enough, both attempts actually bugged out on me in my game, so enjoy both of these unedited clips of me attempting to kill the bear. Or if you're feeling lucky, you can take this bow. Might take her by surprise. Go ahead. I'll follow your lead and watch your back. If you're feeling lucky, you can take this bow. Might take it by surprise. Go ahead. I'll follow your lead and watch. Either way, now we are home free, and now after looting the helmet, wine, gold, and other loot in the room, we can move past this section of the cave and see light up ahead. I was starting to wonder if we'd ever make it. That looks like the way out. I knew we'd make it. Exiting the cave, we see the dragon from earlier fly overhead and into the distance. Wait!
There he goes. Looks like he's gone for good this time. No way to know if anyone else made it out alive. But this place is going to be swarming with Imperials soon enough. We better clear out of here. Murder runs the mill in Riverwood, just up the road. I'm sure she'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. Good luck. I wouldn't have made it without your help today. Wait! Looks like he's gone for good this time. But I don't think we should stick around to see if he comes back. The closest town from here is Riverwood. My uncle's the blacksmith there. I'm sure he'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. Good luck. I wouldn't have made it without your help today. And with that, we finally end the quest Unbound and begin the quest Before the Storm. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is all the time I have for you guys today. In the next video, we will travel with our companion here to Riverwood for supplies and advice on what we, the player, should do next. But until then, I hope all of you have enjoyed this video I have worked so hard to make for you today. I'd like to take this moment to thank both of my Patreons, Septum and Papacito. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, it means a lot. And for all of you watching, say it with me now. Play well, eat well, and of course live well, friends. I've got more videos to make, so I'll see you all next time.